everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a particular scenario and how we can use Power Query to give us our desired result. So we have a very simple data set uh, consisting of eight rows. And you can see for each row, we've got a person's name and each person has a number of codes associated to them. So for person number one, we can see that this cell contains three different codes, each separated by a hyphen. And as we look down each person, we can see they've all got different codes and some have got more than others. So majority have got three codes, but we can see person number six has actually got eight codes in there. So, you know, we, we know that this varying in size as well. What we want to do is rather than have this view uh, or the only available to us, we want to split these over three rows. So taking person one as an example, and let me just do it so you can see visually on the screen. This is the desired result that I would like to see for each person. So I'd like to see um, two columns still, but actually rather than person one only being on one row, I want the person's name split by however many rows there are applicable to how many codes they have. And you know, I've just done it quite quickly here for one, but in, let's imagine that rather than just eight rows of data, I've got maybe a hundred rows. So obviously it's something that would take quite a lot, a lot, long time to do manually. And that's where Power Query is obviously gonna make this a lot quicker and efficient for us. So in order to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is convert this range to a table. Uh, you don't need to do that at this stage. Um, Power Query is clever enough to do that conversion for you. But I'm gonna do it just so we can make sure that we give our table uh, a name that we can remember as it become valuable in the next step. So in order to insert a table, all you need to go is insert and go table. You can see it selected our range because I've just done it. And then double click or click this just so it knows that my, my table does contain headers. And then we're going to go into the, or we'll, it will load the table design sheet. And I'm going to just rename table 11 and yours might say table one, but I've been playing the sheet earlier. So that's why it's showing table number 11 for me. I'm going to call this input underscore data and hit enter. And we can see that that table is now called input data. So we're gonna remember that input data. We'll now go to data, our data tab being more specific. And under the get transformation data, I'm gonna go into from table slash range. And we can see once it's loaded, we've got this query that's been created over the left-hand side here. And we can see that our data set resembles that which we were just looking at. If you're not familiar with Power Query, um, we're not gonna go in too much detail in this video, uh, but if you are a beginner, don't worry, there's not gonna be anything that you can't follow along, uh, and I'll try and cover off some detail where applicable. So we can see, if let's, let's step back. So looking at Power Query, we can th see there are kind of three main sections that we're gonna be looking at in this video, or f well, four maybe. So the first part is we've got a queries pane. So this is gonna show us all of our available queries. For us, it's only gonna have the one. The middle section you can see is split in two. So we've got our formula bar here, so we can see what's going on. And also we can then see how our data set is looking. And on the far right hand side, we've got this query settings pane, uh, which contains the properties so that we can rename our query and also the steps that have been applied to that query. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rename this. So it appears confusing at first because it looks like this is our table but actually this is a new query based on our table. So we're gonna change this and call this output. If I could spell output correctly, hit enter, and you can see us updated our query's name. And if we were to go into the steps, so we can see we've got two at the moment. So going into the first, which is source. So this is where our output query is getting its data from. And as you can see, it's an Excel query and it's looking at our current workbook and it's going to name input data. So I would say not to be confused, obviously it's not gonna say table name, it just says the name of the item is input data. Uh, so which is also that table we created at the start and it's gonna be pulling in all the content. The next thing what's happening in our steps is it's just gonna change the formatting. So you can see at the moment it's identified that the name column should be text, identified in the top left here, and that codes at the moment is identified as being text as well. If you wanted to change the format of these, you could just select the top left or select the icon and it will allow you to go whatever format suits you best. But for the time being, we'll leave it as text. And all we're gonna do is go over here to close and load, just so we can get out of the Power Query Editor and also get our data loaded into the sheet. 
Upon doing that, you can see it's created a new sheet for us called uh, Output. So let's just move that to the right hand side because I like to work left to right. So what we've now got is we've got two tables and two sheets. The first one and the blue table, so it's nice that it's differentiated the color for us, is our source table. So we're going to call this our input. And this is not connected to anything, it's just a static table that we have to update and amend accordingly. But if we go to our output sheet, we can see that this table is now connected to our input table. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to go in here and add another person. So let's go person number eight. And let's give them a number of codes. <clears throat> Oops, just added a line by mistake. If it goes output, you can see initially nothing's happened, but if I right click and go refresh, it's going to identify and pull through that other value. So basically when you refresh, the query is going to refresh, go to the source, and then pull through any additional values. Alternatively, if I go to input and we go delete this row and then refresh this one, you can see it's now going to update it and remove that row because it's no longer there. So kind of phase one is working, you know, we've, we've got our initial query, but we want to update this query so that it's obviously separating our codes based on the hyphen and also separating them onto their applicable, their own separate row. So I'm just going to just jump into the query by double clicking, clicking over the side here. So the first thing we want to do is separate based on that hyphen. So all I'm going to do is just right click on our desired column. Well, actually, I don't even need to right click, just left click. And then under the home tab, you'll see there's this option for split column. So if you click the drop down and go by delimiter, and those who are familiar with using text to columns in Excel will be used to this. Obviously, the layout is slightly different. But what we need to first do is select our delimiter. So for us, it's going to be the hyphen, but it could be any one of these values. And generally speaking, it's, this functionality is really good. It'll automatically pick up what the likely delimiter is going to be for you. But if it hasn't, then you just obviously need to select your desired one from here. Ours is apparently a custom one, and you can see it's been added here. Uh, if you had a different value, so maybe you've got a pound sign or something else custom, all you need to do is just add it into this box here for it to obviously pick up desired as required. So I was going to put our hyphen there. Next part is you can obviously decide how you're going to split the data. You can obviously play around with these, but for our purpose, we just want to make sure that every occurrence of that hyphen, we need to obviously separate our values into separate columns. And we don't need to worry about anything else at this stage, so let's just click OK. And you can see what it's done is it's separated our codes into their own columns. What happens when this query runs is it will go through and it will find, you know, what it, in essence, what it's going to do is go and find, okay, which row or person, to make it easier to follow, has the most amount of codes. For us, we know it's row six. So we know, or the query knows that it needs a maximum of, or a minimum as well, of eight columns to separate all those values for person six. And you can see that all of them have been populated here. For any people or rows that don't have those eight um, codes, like any of the other ones you can see, this top one is the first example, you can see it will distribute or separate the first three or the only three, and then any other values or columns will then just show this null result to show that it's not applicable to that one there. The next thing we now want to do is rather than have, obviously, these various codes over various columns, is we want to split them so that actually they have their own unique row. We can really simply do that. All we need to do is we could go and select all of these columns, but the easiest way I like to do it is just select the name column and right click and then go down to unpivot other columns. You'll see when using Power Query, you often have this ability to either unpivot your selection or unpivot everything that anything other than your selection, if I've made that sound correct. So let's go unpivot other columns. And you can see what it's done is almost done this transform or transform, uh, like as in the transform paste that we get to do, or transpose, not transform, sorry, transpose. And we can now see that our name uh, field has been broken out via the applicable number of rows to suit the columns. I'm not the columns, the codes. So person number one only had three codes. So we can see that they have been split out here. So we've got person one and three codes applicable to them. And also very cleverly, what the 
um, transpose is done is it's excluded any with null. So rather than having person one eight times, just because person six does, it hasn't done that. It's only done it the number of times that it needs. And if we go down to person six, you can see that they've now got eight rows because they've got codes one all the way through to eight. We could leave that there, but just being particular and to tidy things off, we don't need this column here, the attribute, what was previously the column names. So all I'm gonna do is remove that by right clicking and selecting remove. So we're left with our two desired columns. And now the real benefit over here of the applied steps is it just gives us the ability to see what's happened. And if we need to amend anything along the way, we can do that. So let's just quickly step through those once again. So the first thing what's happening is we're gonna pull in data from our input data table. The next thing that's going to happen is it just makes sure the format is correct. We're then going to go in and split out by our, via our delimiter, what it's done here. The next thing is it's also changed the type, so you can see it's just made all of them now integers rather than text. You could obviously change this back to text if you desired by updating in here, but we're going to overstep that for the or step past that at the moment. We're then going to go into um, unpivot. So basically it's going to um, make sure that everything is in rows rather than columns. And lastly, we've removed that attribute column just because we don't need it. So we're basically left with what we want. So let's now go close and load. You'll see it's now going to refresh. And then what should happen is we end up with our desired result. Yeah, so we've got it there. So let's just get rid of this to tidy things up. So yeah, we can now see we've got all of our code split out. And the brilliant part of this now is as more people are added, so let's go person eight again. And let's say that they've got um, four different codes. And I'm gonna go just to the same number here because I'm just being lazy, like that. And we go into our output section, refresh this, and you can see that person number eight has also now been pulled through as well. So we've got a result and we've achieved what we want. The only thing to note here, um, and it's important as you're doing this, is because our query was built um, based on our current data, it's only going to give us the ability to split out by eight. So let me just make that a bit more simple to understand. If we go back into Power Query and we go into our step which does the splitting, you can see that uh, the formula for doing this is hard coded. So what it does is it says, right, we want to get um, our codes column and we want to split based on obviously this hyphen here and we want to split into eight columns so this is where I said obviously for those not, they don't have eight codes it's going to show null in the empty ones um, but it's obviously fixed to this total number of eight columns so if you were to go and add into your um, source table or input table should I say uh, and wait for it to load so let's say we go into here and we do person number nine, number nine, and maybe they've got, uh, so I need to do nine in here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's just do 10 to be safe. And we don't want the additional row there. Because this one has got m more than those eight columns, what will happen when we refresh this, is they won't all be picked up. So you can see it's only gonna to go to a maximum of eight rows or eight columns, obviously, as in the steps. So this is just one thing that you need to bear in mind. If you are trying to build this on so that it can be reusable, so that as more information is added to it or you know you can use it on an ongoing basis, one thing you want to factor in is to make sure that you, know, you have your most uh, number or whatever scenario of code you have. So for this one, if, you need to factor in that if there's a potential to have 20 codes here, that you need to have built that into your query when you've done it. But to be fair, because it's such a quick solution, you could just do this every time that you need it and that way it would update accordingly. But that's just one thing to note in there is whatever the maximum number of codes is when at the time of building this is the maximum you'll ever have available. So any additional codes won't be picked up. I hope that hasn't gone and confused you, but yeah, it just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, or maybe this is your first time finding the channel, please do subscribe and make sure you hit that bell notification button. That way, as soon as new videos are released on the channel, you will be notified of them. And if you did like the video and it was useful to you, please don't forget to give the video a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does does help the all-important YouTube algorithm for our channel. Once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.